Yes, he's mad. I do so love custard. Or was it mustard? We removed your brain. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. Vivisect me, please. You think I don't know how crazy I sound? Of course I do. They hate me just to torture me. The things you do with our body are suicidally dangerous. You're a monster. A deranged monster. Get ready, buckle up, for we have many places to go today. We've explored most of the major locations in Big Mountain, so all that remains are a few minor ones, some of which aren't involved in any quests. But in an effort to explore every location, which will grant us an achievement and a better ending, we must explore them all. Plus, we'll find some great lore. Today we're going to cover the innovative toxins lab, explore the mysterious cave, examine a few other locations, and install the personalities for the sink, the biological research station, and the jukebox. To begin, let's explore Z43, the innovative toxins plant. As we get close to the building, we see a sickly green ooze leaking from under the garage door. It's clear that Ulysses has been here before us. We find his signature on the door. Heading inside, we arrive at a small loading bay and we see that a toxic barrel has tipped over, which is likely the cause of this spill. While exploring the northwest corner of this loading bay, we find a corrosive glove on a desk. The corrosive glove is a new, unique scientist glove we find in Big Mountain, similar to the sterilizer glove that we found in Y-17 or that we looted on the body of Super Ego. The difference is that instead of an incendiary effect that comes with the sterilizer glove, the corrosive glove has a poison effect, poisoning enemies with two poison damage every second over five seconds upon each successful critical hit. But as we loot the corrosive glove, we we cause Y-17 trauma harnesses to spawn right here in the loading bay. This is another opportunity to trigger the Hey Who Turned Out the Lights Wild Wasteland Encounter. Well, now I'm completely disoriented. This was an unexpected encounter that I wasn't quite prepared for. Now, the ground floor of the facility is strewn with all sorts of toxic barrels, scrap, glue, empty bottles, and a myriad of containers to loot. There's nothing really special inside here except for the corrosive glove, which we already found. Of note, there's a chemistry set against the western wall that we can use to create some stim packs or chems. And here we see two little half orbs. I'm not sure if this is a disassembled bomb that maybe at one time held poison or if they're part of a container. I'm not sure. But on the ground to the north, lying against a filing cabinet, we find the hazmat pod security code. And what could this be for? Well, there is a stairway in the middle of the floor heading up. We can take it all the way to the top where we see a terminal lying on a desk. Inside, we find one item. Requisition order, chemical suits. Got word today there was a chemical leak at the Sierra Madre. Sinclair was on the phone to ask for more help from the think tank execs. So they're sending him some prototype chemical suits to protect the villa workers. Looks like they're following up an experiment with another experiment? The whole process creeps me out. And the way they're monitoring the Sierra Madre Villa and examining the results, I don't think Sinclair even knows what he is really paid for. To be guinea pigs like the little Yang Zi Chinese. Maybe it would be merciful if war did break out, put an end to this chain of horrors. We learned from reading the terminals in the villa outside the Sierra Madre that the cloud we find there 200 years later, the cloud that preserves the technology there and turned the workers into ghost people, was part of a Big Mountain experiment. Big Mountain was the one that released the cloud to see what would happen. The cloud was likely developed here at the Innovative Toxins Lab. But what about the hazmat suits that Sinclair requested that the think tank executive sent over? Well, it's no coincidence that we found a hazmat code on the ground here. Heading outside. How 
I'll just set this on repeat while I go relieve my tank. No one will know. We travel east towards X8. Along the way, we find a pile of Xander root next to half a torso leaning against a rock. Directly west of this point is a big ruined office building. Outside we see Ulysses' signature and we discover that this is the hazmat testing ground. Walking through the rubble we see that the floor is completely disintegrated, revealing some sort of basement with a bunch of sickly green looking ooze at the bottom. As we get close to the stairs we get rushed by lobotomites. Taking the stairs down, we see a drainage pipe to the north with all sorts of poison leaking out of it. And in the middle of the ruin, inside some sort of pod, we find a hazmat suit containment unit. And it looks shockingly familiar. Using the code we found in the Innovative Toxins Lab, we can disable the force field and take the hazmat suit. With that, we get two pieces to the suit, the hazmat dark light cowl and the hazmat suit. The hazmat suit looks like a black radiation suit, only it has much more DT with 11 DT. However, instead of protecting the wearer from radiation, it instead protects from poison with a plus 85 to poison resistance. The cowl has a DT of 2, and it doesn't protect from poison, but it does give us a night vision effect. The night vision effect makes it easier to see at night, but it's not a consumable, which means we can use it as often as we want. The effect works a lot like Ghost Sight from the Sierra Madre. We recall from the terminals that we read in the villa outside the Sierra Madre that when the villa workers got this hazmat suit, the poisonous cloud caused the clasps to rust shut. This made it impossible for the workers to get out of the suit without cutting it open. This is why we found so many ghost people wandering the Sierra Madre in these hazmat suits. Those were the utility workers, driven mad by the cloud much like feral ghouls, only trapped in these hazmat suits. Next, let's talk about the jukebox. We find the personality holotape of the jukebox inside Higgs Village in house number 108. This was Dr. Eight's house. We find the holotape lying on his desk, leaning against a stack of papers next to a walkie-talkie. With the holotape in hand, we can go back to the sink and activate the jukebox to install the personality. Ooh, yeah, dig that sweet music. Damn, it's good to be back on line. This jukebox name is Blind Dio Jefferson. Likely a reference to the famous Texas blues artist known as Blind Lemon Jefferson. What's your purpose here, Blind Dio Jefferson? Dig, I'm an acoustical wizard kid. Old Doc Moe used me to prototype his sonic weapon designs. Get me a good sample base to work from and I can whip up a way that makes Jericho look like a kazoo. Hey, that's pretty neat. Can you do anything like that for me? Got yourself a sonic emitter, don't you? Thought so. Bring that old thing on in here and bring me some sound samples and I'll make that baby sing. Or scream, <laughs> if that's what you want. You seem pretty laid back for an engine of destruction. Why not? Ain't like I got nothing to prove. Not like that toaster. Now that boy got some issues. What about music? Do you play music? Mmm, used to. Long time ago. Then old Doc Moe ripped out my music drives and stuck in more acoustical processors. Guess you could say I got the blues even if I can't play them no more. We can use Blind Dio Jefferson to recalibrate our sonic emitter with a new sonic frequency every time we find one. When ready, we can then say I want to recalibrate the sonic emitter. Right on, baby. Just plug it in and I'll mix you up a sweet, sweet sound. We can then choose from a list of all of the different sonic frequencies that we've discovered. There are four plus Revelation, which we got when we first got here. The first one, Revelation, is the weakest of the bunch. It only does 31 damage with a DPS of 32.1. However, it has a great critical effect 
Upon critical hits, we have the chance to paralyze an enemy for 10 seconds. If our character has a high critical chance, it's possible to chain paralyze enemies, making it impossible for them to attack us. We find the next sonic frequency inside Higgs Village, in the same house where we found the personality of Blind Dio Jefferson. We find it sitting on a nightstand next to Dr. Eight's bed. This gives us the sonic frequency Opera Singer. Opera Singer has the third highest damage in DPS, with 55 damage and 56.9 DPS, and its critical effect is a dismember effect. The next one is Giant Tarantula. We also find this in Higgs Village in house number zero. This is Dr. Zero's house. We find it in his office room on top of the terminal. Giant Tarantula has the second highest DPS for the Sonic Emitter, with 60 damage coming in at 62.1 DPS. Its critical effect is an incendiary effect, doing two fire damage every second for five seconds. <laughs> We find the next one inside the X-8 facility. After fighting Gabe the giant dog, we see that he has buried his audio sample in one of his digging spots. Here we find audio sample Gabriel's Bark. This does the same damage as Opera Singer, 55 damage, 56.9 DPS, but it has a knockback critical effect. <laughs> Now the final sonic frequency we haven't found yet because we discover it inside the Forbidden Dome. Now I'm not going to give away any spoilers until we cover it, so I'll just briefly show you where it is. We find it lying on one of the tables next to some binoculars in the Forbidden Dome. This gives us the audio sample Mobius's Robo Scorpion. This is the strongest emitter frequency, doing 65 damage with a DPS of 67.2. And on critical hits, it has a chance to do 100 explosives damage. Like many of the personalities in the think tank, Blind Dio Jefferson has random things to say when we walk by. I ever tell you about Saxomatron version 4.0? That cat was the best trumpet player I ever met. And then you gotta figure that the no's and the don'ts of life is to make you stronger. And a satisfied man is an ignorant man. And one day you'll realize that facts are stubborn things. And it doesn't stop till the fat lady sings. And if a woman is skinny, don't trust her. It means that she don't eat much. And a woman that don't eat can't cook. And if she can't cook, she don't read a book. And that's not a situation to be in. And one last thing, young man. A happy wife is a happy life. It's better to sleep on the edge of the roof than to live in the house with a quarrelsome woman. Yeah. <laughs> Dig this sweet sound I got cooking. What I wouldn't give to be able to pick up Radio New Vegas. Mmm, those cats can really play. You ever heard of Tiny Lester Luton? Best jazz harmonica I ever heard. Mind you being a super mutant with no lips. Don't ask me how he played. You heard of Doc Boney? Sang with the staff band till his wife caught him in bed with a nurse. Now he haunts the med center, still singing the blues. <laughs> Here and now, got its ups and downs, but focusing on the past like it was any better. That's just old world blues. Someday, I'd like to meet the man who's got no blues to sing. And he has three possible endings. If we beat the DLC, having found and installed fewer than three sonic frequencies, he gets the following ending. Blind die old Jefferson. Eventually discovered a new sound. Silence. 
It only made him more filled with the blues than before. If, however, we found an installed three or more sonic frequencies, he gets the following ending. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter-frequency that saved Big Mountain from sonic invasion in 2910. If you didn't hear about it, good. And if we installed both light switch personalities, he gets an additional ending. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Next up is the biological research station. To find his personality, we have to travel to the canyon. As we travel along, we see giant plants snaking overhead, and we see a staircase guarded by Mr. Gutsies. The staircase leads to X-22 Botanical Garden. At the top, we find a large ruined structure, and roaming around on the ground floor is a spore person. And his name is Patient Zero. <laughs> X-22. That name can't be a coincidence. Experiment 22. This must be where Big Mountain developed the virus that infected the Vault Dwellers in Vault 22. And the spore person we just killed must be the very first person ever infected with this horrible virus. Inside, we find more spore people, and like we did in Vault 22, we find spore plants. Cessation of hostilities complete. We find the personality for the biological research station lying on a beam of wood next to an electric hot plate. There's also another spore plant in a completely inaccessible spot, sitting way up at the top of this mountain on some rocks next to some leaking pipes. Cessation of hostilities complete. While we're here, we need to go up the stairs to the broken second floor to loot a big seed package. With that, we get a bunch of dried plants. Dried block flower, jalapeno, pinto bean, and xander root. This will be important once we activate the biological research station, which we can do when back at the sink, we activate the appliance. Ooh, oh yeah, baby. Feels good to be online again. Yeah, all circuits online, ready to receive your seed. Oh God, no, not another one. Uh, my seed? I think you've got your biology mixed up there. Nah, baby. I'm all about biology. I'm the original, certified, rarefied, testified GS2000 Biological Research Station. I'm a seed cloning machine. You got seeds. I will clone the shit out of them. Clone seeds? What does that mean? It's the miracle of life, baby. You bring me some succulent genetic samples, and I'll work my mojo on them. Clone you up all kinds of plants. Oh, yeah. I can also break them down for you, if you're into the kinky stuff. Bring me any old plant parts, and I'll grind them up into salient cream for you. Yeah, you like that, don't you, baby? So, if I bring you samples of dried plant life, you can clone them and grow them here in these planters? You know it, baby. I just need some samples, and I got you going. Take a few days, but trust me. It's all kinds of good. Mm. Okay, I I trust you. Uh, but what's salient green? Just the miracle of life in sticky, gooey, liquid form, baby. Heat that gunk up over a campfire and just watch it congeal into all kinds of plants. Could they have made this guy any more disgusting? <laughs> And we find that yes, they could, because below we have an option to say, I command you to open your port and receive my seed. Ah, yeah, baby. Just slip it in there, all the way down in that dark, moist earth. 
launching interface. For Pete's sake, we then get the option to either process seeds into planter or convert plant matter into salient green. Now this is regarding the big packet of seeds we picked up from X-22. Choosing process seeds into planter removes the dried seeds from our inventory and plants them in the planters. When we talk to him again... Well, hello. Still waiting for that seed. He says this because there are even more seeds to find. Two more packages, to be precise. To find them, we need to travel to the Signal Hills transmitter, just west of the Think Tank. Here, we find a broken relay tower that has fallen to the ground, forming a ramp over the canyon. Heading across, we see a fountain next to a green field across the way, and there we find some spore plants, one of which is a boss, Dionia muscipula, which is the Latin name for Venus flytrap. After destroying the spore plants, we can walk forward, where immediately we see a big red bag. This is the second bag of dried seeds. Continuing forward, if we look inside the fountain, we see a skeleton wearing a Valance Radii Accentuator. The third and final bag is not far from here. Heading northwest, we see a green pipe allowing us to pass over the canyon, but we have to be careful because it is booby-trapped. On the other side, we find one more spore plant, and it's here where we find the final bag of seed. With that, and if we collected all sonic emitter frequencies for Blind Dio Jefferson, we complete the quest, Field Research. Back at the sink, we can give the biological research station the final batch of seeds. You got some plans for me, don't you? Yeah, I can smell it all over you. <sighs> And we can already see that the previous seeds we've planted have sprouted. This is an extremely useful appliance. After waiting three days or so, we can check each of these boxes where we find a wide variety of plants. We can pick them all and then activate the biological research station to take advantage of his other functionality. We now see the option to convert plant matter into salient green. The biological research station will then remove all plant matter from our inventory. After it goes through absolutely everything, it converts it into salient green. After looting everything in this room, I got 55 canisters of salient green. Now to use the salient green, we go to any campfire or hot plate. We now have the option to cook up a bunch of cloned vegetables. This requires a survival skill of 25 or more. Each cloned vegetable or fruit consumes one salient green. The reason this is so cool is because now it doesn't matter what plant we harvest. We can harvest any plant and turn it into any other plant by first transforming it into salient green at the biological research station and then cooking up a cloned plant from a hot plate or a campfire. One great application of this is to create stim packs. To craft a stim pack at a workstation, we need brock flour and xander root. Using my salient green, I can cook up a bunch of cloned brock flour and xander root, and then go on over to Muggy and have him process my mugs. He then gives me empty syringes. With the cloned vegetables and the empty syringes, I can then go to any workbench and combine one brock flour, one empty syringe, and one xander root to create a stim pack. This is a wonderful way to keep topped up on stim packs. Like many appliances in the sink, the biological research station has random things to say as we walk by. Baby, don't believe a word that sink says. She's all lies. Muggy? Yeah, Muggy's all right. Not too seedy. But hey, nobody's perfect. Couldn't stay away, could you? Yeah, I knew you'd be back. I'm so good, I might seed you just by looking at you. You ever seen a biological research station this full of seed? No. No, you haven't. Come on, baby. Bring me a sweet little dried fruit. I'll rehydrate all up in that thing. Charming. And he has two endings. If we install this station, but we don't discover X-22, he gets the following ending. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, ran out of fertile plots and blew a circuit, trying to seed itself. 
But if we install the station and we do discover X-22, he gets the following ending. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. Next up, we need to head on over to the northern portion of the crater. If we drop down from a hillside overlooking the Forbidden Dome, we find a skeleton right next to a door that leads to a mysterious cave. Inside is really dark, a great opportunity to use our hazmat dark light cowl. And as we continue along, we find a bloat fly. Creeping forward, we find even more bloat flies off in the distance, until at last we reach a ledge overlooking a large vaulted room. Here we find a legendary bloat fly, but this guy likes to glow. The legendary bloat fly is one of the most difficult enemies in the entire game. He fires a plasma-like bolt at you if you get too close, and he flies so high up off the ground that it's practically impossible to kill him using melee damage. His attack is so strong that he can one or two shot us from a distance. This means that taking him out from range is the best option. If we take him out from extreme range, we can make it so that he can't even see us. I was successful when I hid just inside the tunnel leading to this room. That far away, the bloat fly hovered around confused and I was able to whittle him down. He dies in a large plasma explosion. We can pick off the few remaining flies floating around, and before looting his body, we can explore a cave opening to the southeast. This should remind us of the Brock Flower Cave. It has almost an identical interior. Inside, we find some scientist scrubs and a scientist glove and a whole bunch of randomized loot. Jumping down to the ground floor of the large vaulted chamber, we find the legendary bloatfly's corpse glowing as a goo pile. On his body, we find a whopping 51 bloatfly meat, and a ton of chems, 13 buff out, 12 psycho, and 26 empty syringes. This gives us the impression that, like Gabe before him, this legendary bloatfly was a think tank experiment. They likely injected this bloatfly with a bunch of chems, whereupon he grew to the monster we discovered in the mysterious cave. There are two other locations that have a whole lot of nothing. It's hard to piece together a story of what went on here. The first is just south of the Big Mountain North Tunnel, whereupon we find a large crane inside a loading station. Before the war, this likely was where scientists loaded and unloaded goods from the trains going in and out of Big Mountain. Here we even find a Repcon rocket sitting on one of the canisters and a whole bunch of shipping containers and trucks. We find plenty of lobotomites, but there's really nothing here at the loading station. So going up a nearby staircase, we arrive at the waste disintegration platform. In the middle of the platform, we see a pile of rubble and what looks like four solar panels from Helios 1. They're all pointed towards the middle of this platform. It almost gives us the idea that the station was breaking down junk using light, some sort of heat energy. We find some scrap metal and scrap electronics dotting the platform, and that's really about it. We don't find any terminals explaining this place, but continuing along the catwalk, we do find a pod in clear line of sight of the automatron deconstruction plant, but inside we just find a couple of containers, though we do see evidence that Ulysses was here. Heading to the southeast, we see a big scrapyard. We see destroyed Securitrons, a whole bunch of other broken concrete and scrap, and what looks like the remains of a large robo-scorpion. 
But we've never seen a robo-scorpion this large before, though we remember Dr. O talking about a giant robo-scorpion. Could this be evidence that he was correct and that the giant robo-scorpion does indeed exist? If so, why is this destroyed one here? This is really close to the train tracks leading to the eastern Big Mountain train tunnel. Perhaps Father Elijah can explain all of this destruction. Maybe on his way out, the Big Mountain scientists sent everything they had at him, but he managed to destroy them and escape. The final sink personality is the sink. Not the sink sink, but the sink in the sink. So the sink has a sink, but the sink itself doesn't have a personality. There's no personality for the sink, but we do find a holotape for the sink within the sink. So it's the sink's sink whose personality we're finding right now, not the personality of the sink. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, we find its holotape in the magnetohydraulics complex within the canyon. This is the place we visited in episode 6, my episode on the wild wasteland encounters here in the crater. On a desk next to one of the walking eyes, leaning against a ruined terminal, we find the holotape for the sink. Heading back to the sink, we can go into the nursery to activate the sink. Oh god, look at you! You're filthy! I suppose you'll want to clean up then? You seem kind of worried about dirt. What's wrong? Oh, it's just so unsanitary. Do you know how many germs are in one cubic centimeter of dirt? Seventy hundred gajillion. Would you want that getting washed down your gullet day in and day out? I didn't think so. Gajillion? Ma, that is a precise number. Well, I'll just take a drink of water, thanks. You can have as much as you like. Just uh, please don't put your lips on the faucet. It's so unsanitary. With that, we get a lovely sip of radiation-free water. Delightful. Now, the sink does have an upgrade. We find her upgrade holotape inside the construction site. This is another location I explored in episode 6. Lying on the ground next to one of those downed perimeter fence pylons, we find the sink upgrade water production holotape. And back at the sink, we can activate the sink to install it. You've been working with that biological research station, haven't you? I suppose you'll want to <sighs> clean up. We can now fill empty bottles with purified water. However, we need the bottles in our inventory. If we try to fill some bottles before we have some, she says... You're going to need to find yourself some empties first before I can fill them for you. Any empty bottle will do. It's just not too dirty, okay? Come back any time you want to drink. Or to get... clean. Now any empty bottle will do. Any empty whiskey bottle, Nuka-Cola bottle, Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle. A great place to find bottles is to go to the Skiratron Deconstruction Plant. There's a picnic area just outside with a whole bunch of bottles lying on the tables. I managed to loot so many of the bottles that I became encumbered. Back at the sink, we can then take the bottles to the sink. I just came over to fill some of these empty bottles. I can do that. They... Well, they've been thoroughly washed, haven't they? We then get the option to fill empty bottles or to drink. And if we choose fill empty bottles, the sink removes all of our empty bottles type by type and replaces them with purified water. An incredibly useful feature. Strangely enough, unlike every other appliance in the sink, the sink doesn't have random dialogue when we walk by. At least it never happened to me, and even when extracting the files, I didn't find any random dialogue to play for you. However, she does have a lot to say each time we interact with her. Between you and me, I think the Central Intelligence Unit is a bit of a snob. Why, you poor dear. Come over here and have a drink. Wash off some of that <clears throat> horrible, sticky blood. Well, hello there. Can I get you a drink? It was getting lonely without you here. Clean, but lonely. And she has three possible endings. If we discover and install the sink, she gets the following ending. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. If we also discovered the magnetohydraulics complex, she gets an additional ending. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. 
And if we also find the Z43 Innovative Toxins plant, she gets this final ending. Once it learned of the Innovative Toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. Finally, there is one more minor location we need to discover. We are not only discovering every location for the sake of being complete and thorough, and to discover as much lore as possible, but to get an achievement and to get the best ending. I'll go through all of the endings by the time we finish this series, but we only get the best one if we discover every location. Heading to the far eastern corner of the crater, we find the trains that Elijah commandeered and destroyed. But as we get close to the tracks, we get attacked by Night Stalkers. And then by Lobotomites. After they're finally dead, we discover the Big Mountain East Tunnel. Unlike the North and West Tunnels, however, we can't enter this one. There's no door, we can't access the gate. Elijah did a great job of completely destroying this one. There's nothing near the trains. We find no option to get on the trains. However, if we go to the southern end of the tunnel, we find a little mound that we can climb up. We can then scoot across the rock to jump up on top of the tunnel. Here we find a duffel bag filled with quite an assortment of chems and booze and one of Slough's greasy toolboxes. Remember, Slough was the technician at X-13, whom Dr. Callus says was getting too fat and lazy. From here, we can leap down on top of the nearby trains, whereupon, if we jump from train car to train car, at the very end, we find a first aid box, a super stim pack, and a toolbox filled with more cams and vodka, surrounded by quite an assortment of whiskey. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we discover every location except the Forbidden Dome. In our next episode, we will venture into the Forbidden Dome and finally, at long last, confront Dr. Mobius. I publish a new video six days a week, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next episode in this series, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I take Sundays off, so I'm not going to have a video for you tomorrow on Monday, but never fear, I'll have episode 13 waiting for you Tuesday morning. I have a new shirt in the shop, folks. New California Republic. Now you can sport your NCR pride with one of my t-shirts, sweatshirts, or hoodies. On the front, we have the NCR logo, and on the back, we've got crisscrossing service rifles with an NCR trooper helmet, and the words, patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. You can find a link to the shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early Tuesday morning with episode 13.